Hey guys, my name is Quentin. Probably you instantly got a very bad opinion of me and you consider me a young alcoholic and slob. But this is not entirely true. I do not deny that I am drunk. But it's not my fault because my body gets drunk without my participation in it. Honestly, let me explain everything to you. When I was born, everyone thought I was just an ordinary baby, but a little quirky one. For example, when my mother sang songs to me, I liked to sing along or rather howl to her. And on this sad note, I constantly passed out. I could also roll my eyes during a game and fall asleep on the floor or on the street. Basically, nothing criminal for a child, right? However, my mother was constantly frightened by the fact that I smelled like a person who had drunk alcohol the day before. She even suspected my grandmother of dementia and thought that it was she who added alcohol to my food. It sounds like nonsense, but there were not many options. Grandmother, in turn, called my mother crazy and said that she was fantasizing about smells and that she was going out of her head. As I got older, I stopped being a funny and bizarre child for others and they began to spook at me as well as at my whole family. I smelled of alcohol all the time I walked, staggering, behaved like a drunken moron, and as before, loved to howl drinking songs. It looked not only strange, but it was also wild and scary. Drunk toddler, how creepy. And one day, when I was three or four years old, something happened that was bound to happen sooner or later. Someone appealed to the guardianship authorities with a complaint that my parents mistreat their child, namely, force me to drink alcohol. Can you imagine the shock of the law enforcement officers when they saw that the informers were not lying and that an alcoholic toddler really lives in our house? And of course, they were very ill disposed toward my parents, considering them to be fiends and fanatics. Is it worth explaining how long and difficult it was for my parents to prove that they do not give me alcohol and that I live in very good conditions? I think you already understand what kind of nightmare happened in our lives. I even had to live in an orphanage for three months while the proceedings were going on. And only after detailed examinations, we learned that I have a rare disease, popularly called the auto brewery syndrome. When a person gets drunk from carbohydrates and sugars coming with food, these products getting into the intestines begin to ferment and secrete alcohol, which causes a state of intoxication. <coughs> this shocked my parents, but... At the same time, they were happy that they finally understood what was happening to me and why I was so weird. When we dealt with the law and the diagnosis, the question about my diet rose, which, by the way, is now very fashionable and is called ketone. Its meaning lies in the rejection of carbohydrates and eating only fats and proteins. Actually, for me, it became a way to survive because all internal organs especially the liver, suffered greatly from constant intoxication, alternating with a hangover. It was only when I went on a diet that I learned what sober life is. To be honest, I didn't like it very much. For some reason, everything is not fun, gloomy, and even boring. Neither singing nor dancing for no reason. It's nonsense. I soon realized that I could use my trait for personal gain. Namely, I started scaring my parents that I would eat potatoes pasta, or fruit if I didn't get what I wanted. And it is worth saying these tricks worked perfectly at first. But since I could not stop in time, my demands became more and more insane, sometimes even fantastical. For example, I asked my parents for a spaceship trip as a birthday present. I don't know, maybe if I were the son of an oligarch, maybe this would be a normal request, but being born into an ordinary family, it was strange to demand from my parents what they simply could not give me. And every time I got rejected, I went to get drunk, crossed out, eat carbohydrates or sugar-containing food. And when I was drunk, I would tell my parents everything I thought about them, namely that they didn't love me since they couldn't give me a quadrocopter, a spaceship tour, and a Swiss bank account. They were not very happy to watch this, but there was no choice, and they were patient and waited for me to sober up. When I turned 14, Unexpectedly for everyone, my intoxication was accompanied by violent behavior. 
For example, once my parents and I went on vacation to a small hotel near the lake. Honestly, it was not part of my plan to eat forbidden food. But there were such delicious croissants with cinnamon on the buffet table. I could not resist. And choosing a moment when my parents would not notice anything, I ate a whole croissant. The effect was not long in coming, and soon I was already grabbing the microphone from the singer in the hall and singing songs instead of him. My parents tried to calm me down and take me to my room, but in vain. The soul asked for singing and dancing. Some of those present laughed at me merrily. Others were indignant and looked condemningly at my parents, who were blushing with shame. Songs and dances were not enough for me, so I went to the lake. Shall I show you what Quentin can do? I said and jumped into the water from the lifeguard tower. For some reason, at that moment, I did not think at all that I could not swim, so I was not destined to come up on my own. Fortunately, I got help very quickly and got off with only a slight fright, but my parents realized that day that my gastronomic breakdowns were now very life-threatening. I realized this myself when I sobered up and remembered everything that happened. I was even ashamed to leave the room after my solo concert and jumping into the water. At the same time, I started having problems at school. I'd never come to school drunk before, but now I did. Just on the way to school, I met my classmate who treated me to Sprite and, hey, Mr. Pickles, your story is incredibly boring. Let me teach this lesson. So guys, are you ready to see the performance of the talented and legendary Quentin? In general, on that day, Teachers and classmates saw me from the side from which they did not know me before, and it was my last day of school because I was immediately expelled. I myself was burnt with shame when the intoxication had passed and would never have appeared in front of my class again. My parents were discouraged. They didn't know what to do with me or how to help me fit into this life. Mom cried and asked me not to gorge on the forbidden food anymore, and Dad threatened to send me to a boarding school if I eat something carbohydrate at least one more time. I understood everything perfectly, but I could not give a guarantee that I would not break down again tomorrow. It was no longer about breaking down out of spite to teach my parents a lesson, but about the fact that I could not resist the sight of certain foods. As a result, after another breakdown, when I ate a portion of french fries and got very drunk from it, I went to the store and made a brawl there, demanding from the seller to answer my question which state of the United States has the most delicious sausages. When I got no response, I started shouting and then smashing up the store. Of course, the police were immediately called to the store and I went to the police station. Then our family got into big trouble because the damage I caused to the store turned out to be unrealistically large. And for our family, it was a real disaster. Moreover, it took time for my parents to prove to the police that I was being raised in normal conditions and that I did not suffer from childhood alcoholism. In the meantime, we were proving this. They sent me to the juvenile reception center and even began to prepare documents for my appointment to a specialized boarding school for troubled teenagers. If only you knew how insulting and scary it is. And when all the horror was over, I myself asked my parents for help. I honestly admitted that sometimes I can't resist and eat forbidden food, so I can't cope with it on my own. My parents praised me for my honesty and took me to a psychotherapist who conducted a hypnosis session. And now I don't remember the tastes of foods that are forbidden to me and I don't want them at all. Would you be able to completely give up carbs? Write your answers in the comments. Click on the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel.